years. Yes, the worst may be over, but how long before we see real growth? Well, let's bring in Ed Batowski of Chapwood Investment, get a sense of investor sentiment, and later, where exactly to invest. Uh, from all accounts, the individual investor is not yet ready to plunge back into the markets. What's the psychology like? Are people still really scared that we're going to see, uh, as Dan Greenhouse was talking about, that other leg down? Well, I'll tell you right now, uh, Michael, it, it, there's no question about it. People are still very skittish. They don't know what to do, when to do it. You're starting to see some people start to reinvest. And I'm talking about people on the front line, people who I deal with every single day, high net worth individuals and people who have worked really hard for this money and they're scared to death on where to go. And as they always do, they do the wrong thing at the wrong time. And we're starting to see a little bit of that right now. So uh, I'm, I'm very scared uh, for the individual investor over the next uh, 12 months. Well, we're a year on. What's it going to take to change attitudes? Well, probably, uh, uh, you know, shows like this uh, talking about some of the positive things that are going on. But at the same time, I think what's going to take is simply going to be some time. It's going to take a little bit of time for people to get comfortable with the market again. And if we have another leg drop, we're going to find ourselves in another problem again. So I'm, I'm not comfortable yet, and I don't think investors are yet. I know it probably caught people's ears out there when you said it, as it did mine. You say people who are getting back in are doing the wrong things. What yeah. are they doing? Well, what they're doing is simply this. They're, they're not necessarily investing back into the overall market. There is a little bit of money starting to go into it, but it's going in right now. I mean, we had a 50% move up since March 9th, and what are people doing? Now they're starting to invest when the market on some of the bigger companies is pretty fairly valued. And having said that, they're probably going to see, now that we're into September and as we go into October, there's a good chance we're going to see a market pullback, then they're going to lose some money and they're going to say, my goodness, I can't believe this happened again. <laughs> we were just talking with Dan er earlier about the explosion in the PE so quickly. We've gone from 11 to 19. So if somebody wants to get back into the market facing what you say might happen, uh, have they missed the boat? They haven't. Well, they missed the first leg of the boat. OK, I mean, there's going to be you know a lot more to this over the next couple of years. But right now, people are saying, hey, the market's up this much. We're starting to get a lot of press on it. I want to start diving back into this market. And it's a big problem that people are going to lose money if they dive in right now. I think over the next 45 days, it's a very, very tenuous situation. And if they're looking to get back into the market uh, for the first time since they've been out of the market, I would absolutely encourage people not to do that. Uh, interesting, because there's uh, two of you now that we've had on the show that say much the same thing. Those who are coming into the market and you say they're making mistakes, what are they buying? Well, right now, they're simply they're buying equities at this very moment, and they're Across buying the board anything they can get their hands on. Or? Right, there is. They're buying big companies, and those companies are where the money went into first. Michael, the money went into the market. They went to the bigger companies that were tremendously undervalued, and now they're going in and they're buying those that seem to be fairly valued. A normal cycle would be after a, a, a time period that we just had, people will invest their money, they'll put it into those big name stocks, and those market those those stocks became fully valued. Now the ones that have not really been bought are the smaller stocks and they're not buying those. But usually coming out of a, a, a big downturn, people put their money into the growth stocks, the small caps. In, in normal time periods, you're absolutely right. Matter of fact, right after recessions, normally small cap growth stocks do very, very well. This was different. This was not a normal recession. Why do you think uh, the psychology was different in terms of the reaction to the rebound? People went into the big cap stocks fear and, and they just wanted the safety? The, a little bit of that, but also people were going into mutual funds and those mutual funds are indexed more towards, you know, you take your S&P, they're going to buy the bigger cap names. There wasn't a lot of money buying these small companies because quite frankly, they didn't know if they were going to exist. Now, honestly, a lot of them didn't know if any of the big companies were going to exist either. But I think a lot of money went into those bigger companies early on, and now they seem to be fairly valued. And that's, that's exactly why I'm very cautious right now. So we've had a change in the investing environment. No, no, there's no question about that. And right, and, and quite simply, a year ago, because we're here on the anniversary, what we had really was a buy and hold mentality. That's what people did with a lot of the retirees. Now, nobody's buying and holding. People are buying and just worrying and wondering when should they get out. That money is not real sticky money at this point. All right, I'm going to sit on my cash for 45 days. I'm not going to invest it, as you say. But when <laughs> I come back, how do I want to start rebuilding my portfolio? And that's, that's an excellent question because a, a lot of people didn't have their portfolios properly balanced before all of this took place. And what I talk about, they teach us in business schools and, and on the institutional level, Michael, they talk about what your rate of return um, is and what your standard deviation or in our business, we call it risk. And there is a simple ratio that everyone should know, and that is how much risk am I taking for the rate of return I'm getting? Sounds real simple. And there is a, a ratio called the Sharpe Ratio. William Sharpe won a Nobel Prize in 1990 based on this strategy, or not this strategy, but on this ratio. 
You can Google it, all right? Go out and just put in sharp ratio and read about it. And every investor should hold their financial advisor accountable for what they're recommending. And if you have a sharp ratio based on this, you take your rate of return and divide that by your standard deviation. If you do that properly, and, and what you're really doing is taking your rate of return minus your risk-free rate of return, but you can do it either way. And if you don't have a number that is above 0.5, then you do not have a very good portfolio. Well, how does the average person figure out, I mean, they can Google what the uh, result is, but mm -hmm. how does the average person figure out the standard deviation of risk on a particular stock? Well, it's not so much on a particular stock because any individual stock by itself is not a good portfolio. We must rebuild portfolios, not just buying individual stock positions. And in doing so, you must look for investments whose risks are different. And how do you get that information? From your financial advisor. All that information is readily available to you, either through your financial advisor or simply just look up it on the internet, you can find what your volatility or standard deviation is on a portfolio. And you say uh, what you want to be is where? What number? Well, what you really want to have on a sharp ratio, you want it to be about 0.5 or higher, and you must look at it over a long period of time, not just one or two uh -huh. years, and you also want your standard deviation to be about 60% or less in your historical rate of return. All right. Stay with us, uh, Ed, if you could, because we want to assume caution how to work it in this economy. Ed stocks include one that rose 8% today, and he's betting that everyone at some point will need to cool off, as we mentioned. His picks coming up next on Taking Stock. Investment options for the early stages of recovery, with no less than the Fed chairman declaring the recession is very likely over from a technical perspective, it may be time to do a fall cleanup of your portfolio. We're talking with Ed Butowski, who runs about $2 billion as managing director of Chapwood Investments. We were talking about uh, rebuilding people's portfolios, uh, but you're suggesting you want to sit on the sidelines for a little while with equities. Uh, what would you do with your money? Obviously, you earn nothing in cash. In the meantime, what are we going to do? Right, that's a tough one, because if you want to have absolutely no risk at all, you're going to earn just about nothing right now. Now, that will change over the next couple Couple of years, but it, at this moment, you're looking at money markets that are paying less than one percent. Treasury bills uh, are paying very, very little, and and that's all because there's been such a flight to treasuries because of the panic. That panic is starting to wear off a little bit, just as uh, Fed Chairman has said, the recession's likely over. We'll start to see interest rates rise. But right now, you're going to just have to sit on something that pays very little. At this well, point. What about the idea of buying stocks outside of the U.S. in markets that are having a, a much more robust recovery than even this one? Well, they're also, you know, there's quite a bit of risk in markets overseas as well. And really what it comes down to is we can't just be buying individual stocks. We have to be building portfolios. So if one category isn't doing well, we have another category that is doing well. Is there a place in a portfolio for stocks overseas? Absolutely. People have made a lot of money. Our clients have made a lot of money over the years in international stocks. I would favor the emerging markets as, as we have this year versus the, the developed countries overseas. But there is a place for that in a portfolio. Quite frankly, there's a place for just about anything in a portfolio, but it's all about balance. All right, we don't just buy stocks, but we do buy stocks. Right. And when it's time to go back into the markets, what's your favorite company? Well, there's a number of them. I mean, one of them was up 8% today, which is Alcoa. Um, and I, I'm not going to say it was my favorite company, but I like it quite a bit because it is truly a play on the economy recovering. They, they're the leading provider they of aluminum. They were definitely out of favor for a while. Well, absolutely, because the economy was out of favor. And that's why people bought that and started moving it higher. And I still think there's a lot more upside for, for Alcoa. I like Alcoa quite a bit. And it, again, it is a play on the economy recovering and industrial production picking up. Now, you also like Adobe. They reported earnings today, uh, beating the by just a little bit, but uh, also announcing a major acquisition. Mm -hmm. uh, the company seems to be taking more and more market share. Is that what you uh, find appealing? Yeah, and again, this is another play just on, you know, a lot of people think technology is going to lead us out of this, and Adobe happens to be one of those really great companies that is, is involved with a lot of really cool little internet um, technology uh, plays. Um, they just bought this uh, Omniture, and Omniture is going to you know, feed really nicely into all their others, the Adobe, uh, the PDF, the Flash, I think it's called Flashware, and some of these other products that they have. I can't remember all of them offhand, but they're, they're basically a play on the economy recovering. I've got about 30 seconds left. You do like an ETF on your list, iShares Biotech, IBB, the ticker. That's right, and, and, and their, their biggest holdings are Amgen. Uh, Amgen happens to be the biggest one, but their top four holdings represent 30 
forty percent of that ETF, and I believe mm -hmm. biotech is going to do very well. So and I very, like that. Very quickly, Coca Cola. Right. Interest, interesting choice. Everybody needs a drink, right? Well, yes, and they're in two hundred different countries, but it's a big world, and there's a lot of people who haven't tasted a Coca Cola product before, and I think they're 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 poised for the economy to recover worldwide. All right, we'll keep an eye on those stocks. Thank you very much. Okay. When it's time, of course. That's right. <laughs> Batowski for joining us today. Obviously, we are not the stock shopping network so far today. A couple of people saying, wait for a while. You get to